Welcome everyone. Today you're going to be learning how to make the base for the motor mount for the thrust, the test board for it. It looks like this. So basically the motor is going to fit inside here and there's four screw holes here and you're going to attach the motor to the plastic and then you're going to flip it upright and then use screws to attach the plastic to the um, plywood. That way we can have the top spin and put some code to make it work without having, you know, hurting ourselves basically. So we're going to be creating this little part right here. We're going to create this in Fusion 360 in our modeling program, and then we'll export it out to the 3D printers and print it off. Sounds like awesome fun. If this is your first time using the modeling software of Fusion 360, you're not expected to know how to do this on your own yet. You're going to pick up little bits at a time. It is kind of hard to pick up for the first time, but then the more you do it, the easier it gets and the more obvious it is. So let's get started. To make this process a little more straightforward, um, I'm gonna start you off with a 3D model of the actual motor, and we'll use this to capture all the geometry, where the holes are and the size of everything. That'll make the process a lot easier. So let's do that real quick. To do that, go to Google Classroom, and you're gonna to go to Classwork. You're gonna find the thruster motor CAD file. CAD, C-A-D, stands for Computer Aided Design. Fusion 360 is a computer-aided design program that allows you to create 3D models on the computer instead of having to make them only in physical space with like clay or something. So it's a really cool program. Let's take a look at it. Here's going to be the thruster motor. If you click on this, it takes you to a link to an online version of the file. And it'll take a second to load. And once it loads, you can actually grab it and move it around. And you can see it looks like this black motor. I put some sparkly paint on it because I like that. I'm weird. Uh, but now that you have this sort of viewing, you can open this file in Fusion 360. And that's the link you have up here. Click on open in Fusion 360. Whoa. -oh. Oh, there it goes. Yep. It said I didn't have it, and then it just automatically opened up. So give it time if it says that. See if it opens up. If not, ask, and I will help you. All right, so now I have my model in here. Um, yours is gonna be a copy just for you. This one's actually using my original copy because it noticed it was my co version of it. So I'm gonna do something you don't need to do. I'm gonna come up here and do File, Save As, and I'm gonna change the name of it um, to Copy. That way I'm not editing my original copy when we mess around with stuff. So I'm gonna hit Save. Okay. And now I've got one and down here in this screen that shows me all my files for the ROV and I've got my copy here that I'm going to mess with and change. Okay, so I can close out this side screen here just by hitting the X. I can bring that side screen back by hitting this sort of waffle up here. That'll bring back this. If I want to see all my files, I can hit the home and this will show me all the folders I have. I should have more than you. Um, but if you haven't yet, you should make one for a new project you should make an ROV project. And inside this project folder is gonna be all my ROV stuff. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna make this base. To do that, we're gonna actually flip the model over. This is the top of the motor. Back over here is the bottom of the motor. This part here, this cutout, is where the wires come out of. I didn't actually model the wires in for you, but just know that the wires poke out up on this model right here. So to rotate the model around, you have to come up here to the view cube in the top right. You grab it and you just kind of twist it around. You'll get more comfortable with exactly how to do it um, as you use it more. It might be awkward and weird at first. You can also click on the corners and it'll take you to that top corner view. So I can go back and click on this corner here. The side corner views will bring you to that top side and then clicking on the flat front of something will bring you to the front. 
I can also use these arrows here to go 90 degrees and look at the left, the back, the right. I can click on these rounded over arrows to rotate. Oh, let me actually switch over to another view to let's see. I'm looking at the top view. I can click these rotation arrows to rotate it, like twist it on the screen around. If I get lost in some weird view, I'm like, what am I looking at? This home button up here takes you back to the original view, which is top, front, and right side. So you can get this top view. This will always take you back to the same view so you're not lost ever. I wanna come around and look at this back side of the thing. So I'm gonna come over here and click on, click and drag the cube until I get it around to the kind of the back side in some way. Now in Fusion 360 to make something, you start with what's called a sketch. It's basically a drawing of the shape you want. And then you do what's called extruding the shape. To create a sketch, you need to tell it where you're gonna draw the sketch. In this case, I'm gonna come up here to create a sketch button. Actually, I'm gonna close this menu so I have more space to work with. I'm gonna click on the create a sketch button and I'm gonna come down here to the flat part, like anywhere around on this flat green part, not in the holes, not on this one up here, but down here, I should see that shape show up. I'm gonna click on it. And when I do that, it's gonna square me up to it. So I'm looking straight at the thing I clicked on. And notice that it's grabbed the shape of the bottom of the motor and put it on my drawing for me already, which is kind of nice. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I actually wanna hide the motor so we can see what's going on. Uh, there's a folder over here on the left-hand side called the bodies folder. In the bodies folder, are all the objects you have. In this case, we have one body, it's the motor. So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna double click on it, and I'm gonna rename this to the thruster. And I keep saying motor, but we're gonna actually use this as a thruster. It's an underwater motor, basically. And I'm gonna hit enter and call that the thruster. Now, one of the nice things, there's a little eyeball next to the thruster. I'm gonna click on the eyeball, it's gonna hide the thruster. And you can see that the shape of the thruster is still on there. Anything I clicked on is on there. But notice this outside circle over here isn't on my drawing yet. If I hide it, there's no outside circle yet. And that's because that outside circle is on another plane. You can see if I turn it sideways, my sketch is on this bottom face and not this line here isn't on my sketch yet. All right. So I'm gonna click back over here to the back view. I wanna get this line on my sketch, this circle here. So what I'm gonna do is use the P for project tool, P. And I'm gonna click on this outside line. And what that's gonna do is I'll tip it sideways so you can see it. You don't need, you don't need to tip yours. But I tip sideways, you can see it's taking this outside line and projecting it up onto my sketch. So now I can use that to line things up with. I also want to grab this outside little arc right here. So I'm going to go back to the back view so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab this one, not the whole thing, just this outside piece of it and click on it. Oh, I think I clicked on the whole thing. If I misclick, I can just click on the thing again and then reselect it. Okay, that's what I want, a complete circle on the outside. Now I'm going to say, okay. Now what I want to do is I want another circle. Let me put it back to the back view. I want another circle that's two millimeters farther out from this inside one. So what I'm gonna do is use the offset tool. So up here in the modify menu, it's probably in this window. If it's not here, you can click on modify and find it in the offset menu. And I'm gonna click on this outside circle and this outside piece. And I wanna offset this by two millimeters. And I'm gonna hit enter. And what the offset tool just did was draw a, a shape, the same as this shape, but two millimeters farther away. All right, now we're ready for our first extrusion. So what we're gonna do is hit E for extrude, or you could have gone to the, well, I'll show it to you later. Um, e for extrude, that's the best way to do it. You're gonna click on this outside circle, this inside circle part, and then this part in between the ones. What you don't wanna click on is this top piece here or the insides of these circles. We don't want to extrude those. Now I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to grab this blue arrow and drag it. You can see what we're doing is we're creating more piece. So we're actually creating a part now. And what I want to do is I want to drag it. Oh, one second. 
far enough so that it goes just beyond this piece down here. Now notice because it's, it's touching this motor, it thinks I want to join it to the motor. I don't want to join it. I'm going to come down to the joint and say, nope, I'm creating something new here. I'm creating this plastic base part. So right now we're creating this bottom half of it. Make sure when you're looking at it from the side view that the, the new part, the gray part, goes a little bit past where the green part is because that's going to keep that motor nub at the bottom, this thing here, from grinding on the plywood. So we're going to make it a little bit farther than that. For me, it was about six millimeters. And then I'm going to say, OK. Now notice in my body folder, I have two bodies. I've got my thruster motor still. And I've got a new body. So I'm going to double click on my new body. And I'm going to call this the base. Awesome. Now we have the first part done. Notice how I've got holes here for the screws to go into and attach to the motor really well. The only problem is, is that this face is going to be sitting on the plywood. And if I put these screws in it, the screw head is going to be raised above. So we need to be able to make a hole in this so that the screw head is inside of it. Here's how we do that. So we're going to create a sketch on the bottom surface here where we're going to cut the hole. It's going to square us up and we're going to create a new circle. I'm going to put it lined up with the old circle. And the way I do that is I go towards the middle. When you see that circle, it means you're on the center point of the other circle you're inside. So you're centered now in that circle. And what I'm going to do is use my calipers to measure how wide the head of the screw is. So I'm going to put the head of the screw in there. I'm going to see it is about 5.2 millimeters wide. I want to make it extra wide so it's not too small. It's okay to be a little bit too big. It's a real problem to be too small. It won't work if it's too small. So I'm going to round that 5.2 up to 6 millimeters. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to do that same thing for all four screws. So I'm going to come here and grab my circle tool. I'm going to click right in the middle where it has a, a, a circle. And then just do 6 enter circle tool go to the middle six enter circle tool go to the middle six enter now i've got my four holes cut i'm going to tip it sideways a little bit i'm going to hit e for extrude and i'm going to click on these outside donuts these outside rings and notice if i pull it towards me it thinks whoops Ooh, I over-selected. Uh-oh. I can't get rid of it. So now I'm going to hit an X here to clear out all my selections. And I'm going to click all four of these. That reminds me of something. If you get lost somewhere and it's not working like it's supposed to, don't sit frustrated. Let me know. I'll come help you. You are going to make mistakes that get you off track. I will get you back on track. All right. So... If I grab this blue thing and I pull it away, it's going to make more material. I don't want to do that. I want to actually drag it back into it and cut a hole. Um, and how far I want to cut, I'm going to click on this left-hand view up here in the cube. And I want to cut about, um, yeah, I think three millimeters is fine. I want to cut about halfway into it. That way the head of the screw can get down into the material. And I'm just going to say... Notice how it's assumed I'm going to cut. That's good. Click OK. And now I've got a place for the screw head to go down into. It's going to rest right there on this surface and then screw into the motor. All right. Awesome. That part's done. Let's call that done for now. So that's our first video. If you can figure out from this point kind of how, well, no. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. If you can figure out the rest, feel free. Otherwise, the next video is waiting for you.